Amelogenesis imperfecta is a developmental anomaly of the teeth. This anomaly is restricted only to enamel and no other tissue of the tooth. Moreover, there is absence of any systemic disorder. The defect causes abnormality in the structure of enamel and therefore affects the clinical appearance and functioning of the teeth. Amelogenesis imperfecta occurs due to mutation of genes related to enamel formation. Depending on what gene is getting mutated, it affects a particular stage of enamel development. The defect in that stage of development influences the clinical presentation of the enamel. Thus, amelogenesis imperfecta is a heterogeneous group of conditions with a wide range of clinical features. Since different genes are involved, amelogenesis imperfecta can be inherited in an X-linked manner or as an autosomal dominant trait or autosomal recessive trait. Sporadic cases have also been reported with no genetic linkage to parents. This table shows some of the genes that are known to be mutated which code for various enamel proteins and cause amelogenesis imperfecta. They are inherited in different patterns. The formation of enamel is a multi-step process and problems may arise in any one of the steps. The three major steps are Elaboration of the organic matrix Ameloblasts lay down enamel proteins in a definite pattern according to the morphology of each tooth. Second, mineralization of the matrix. Mineralization begins on this enamel matrix, but this calcification is only partial taking place in the spaces between the organic matter. Third, maturation of the enamel. For the mineralization to reach its goal of 97% in enamel, space is made by removing the enamel proteins so that the calcifications increase in size. Gradually, the organic matrix is removed almost completely and the mineral deposits form the whole structure. Depending on which of these stages is getting affected by genetic mutation, amelogenesis imperfecta is broadly classified as hypoplastic, hypocalcified, hypomaturation. Around 60-70% to 70 cases of the anomaly are hypoplastic type, where the basic defect is the inadequate deposition of the enamel matrix. The mineralization is carried out normally. Only 7% cases are hypocalcified type, where the basic defect is in the mineralization of the enamel, however enamel matrix is laid down normally. 20-40% cases of amelogenesis imperfecta are hypomaturation type, where the enamel matrix deposition and subsequent mineralization is normal. The basic defect is the maturation of the enamel crystal structure, which results in the alteration of enamel rod and rod sheath. Combination of the three types may be present in the same patient or even in the same tooth. Coming to the clinical features, amelogenesis imperfecta affects the enamel of all teeth in almost equal manner in both deciduous and permanent dentition. The teeth are discolored and have reduced strength. Due to the reduced strength, the teeth show rapid loss of enamel. This leads to sensitivity in teeth and increased caries. Let us study the clinical features under the three types in detail. In hypoplastic type, the main defect lies in the organic matrix. However, the calcification is normal and maturation is normal. The defective enamel matrix causes alteration in the shape and size of the crown. Enamel may show pinpoint to pin head sized pits. These pits are in different patterns. They may be scattered randomly or arranged in horizontal rows which are usually more in the middle third of the crown. Usually the labial surface shows more pitting. Teeth may also show vertical grooves or furrows. In severe forms, the enamel is formed of reduced thickness and causes abnormality in the shape of crown. Like they may appear as if crown preparation has been done. Due to thinner enamel, teeth show open contacts. In most severe form, enamel agenesis may occur where no enamel formation is seen. Enamel appears discolored, may be white yellow or brown, although the hardness of enamel remains normal as calcification is normal. In hypocalcified type, the enamel matrix formation is normal, but the calcification is defective, though the maturation of the defective calcification continues normally. 
As organic matrix is normal, so the newly erupted crown is of normal size and shape. The defective calcification makes the enamel very soft and is therefore easily lost with use. With years of function, the occlusal enamel undergoes attrition at rapid rate with only cervical enamel remaining. The newly erupted teeth are yellow to orange but get rapidly stained to brown and black. In hypomaturation type, the enamel matrix formation is normal and even the calcification is normal. The defect is in the maturation of the enamel. As the enamel matrix is laid down normally, the crown is of normal shape. But like hypoplastic type, enamel is soft and tends to chip off from the underlying dentine. The enamel fractures easily and may be punctured by a dental explorer. The rate of enamel loss is more rapid than normal teeth, but not as rapid as in hypocalcified type. They may show white, yellow or brown discoloration. The discoloration may be uniform or show pigmented pattern or snow-capped pattern. Coming to the radiograph, the radiographic appearance again depends on the type of amelogenesis imperfecta. In hypoplastic type, as the formed enamel is not of normal size and shape, the enamel appears thinner. It may be seen only on cusp tips or in severe cases totally absent. But since the calcification is not disturbed, radio density of the enamel is normal. Therefore shows normal contrast with the underlying dentine. In hypocalcified type, as the enamel matrix is not defective, the crown shape is not altered and there is normal enamel thickness. The problem is in the calcification, which makes the radio density of the enamel reduced. It may appear similar to the underlying dentine. In hypomaturation type, the radiographic features are similar to hypocalcified type. The enamel thickness is normal, but the radio density is reduced. The histological features are not evident in amelogenesis imperfecta. As calcification procedures done, for sectioning of tooth removes all enamel. And in ground section, no characteristic changes are seen. The diagnosis of this disease is basically based on the detailed case history, family history, clinical observation, radiographs and genetic studies. Patient complains of discoloration, rapid attrition and increased sensitivity. It is important to know that all the teeth were affected in deciduous and permanent dentition. The patient may give a history of abnormal shaped teeth from the beginning like in hypoplastic type or were normal initially and underwent rapid attrition to the current state like in hypocalcified and hypomaturation type. In family history, the patient mentions the presence of similar features in family members. Detailed clinical examination of teeth should be done to check the discolorations, changes in shape, hardness of the enamel. Other body parts are also checked to rule out any other syndrome. For example, abnormal nails and hair should indicate ectodermal dysplasia. Radiographs will show the changes in the shape and radio opacity of enamel. Radiographic features of dentine and pulse chamber are noticed to rule out any dentine-related abnormalities like dentinogenesis imperfecta. Though, the type of amelogenesis imperfecta can be only confirmed by genetic studies. Early management of amelogenesis imperfecta is very important. As it affects both deciduous and permanent teeth, it has effect on the functioning and aesthetics of teeth right from the early childhood. The poor aesthetics may have a major effect on the patient emotionally. Thus, early vigorous intervention is required both preventively and restoratively. The treatment is continued throughout childhood and into adult life. It is important to protect the weak posterior teeth from masticatory wear and aesthetically restore the anterior teeth. In children, the deciduous teeth are protected by use of preformed metal crowns on posterior teeth and aesthetic restorations like ceramic crowns on anterior teeth. Similar crown restorations are done in permanent dentition. In case of loss of major tooth structure by attrition, over dentures are provided.